Hello, this is Frank Lawler from EuroLeague TV. We're here in Berlin, Germany on the semifinals day of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. We will go through this weekend and crown a new EuroLeague champion for 2015-2016. But first, all our teams have to get through this biggest first final of the weekend, as they call it, the semifinals. Tonight, I'm joined by our two color commentators on EuroLeague TV for tonight's games, Joe Arlaukas and George Zedek, two former EuroLeague champions. And uh, we will start with tonight's first game between Seska Moscow and Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar, the first all-Russian game in the history of the Final Four. And uh, two teams that bring uh, two specialties to this game in the case of the best offense in the EuroLeague this season, Seska Moscow, and the best defense in the EuroLeague this season for Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar. Joe Arlaka should be doing that game. Let's talk about the uh, star power in the backcourt for both of these teams. Yeah, Frank, thanks uh, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, looking forward to these games. Like you said, it's, you're talking about the best offensive team in the league this year at 90 points a game. And Jessica with the best backcourt by far with Milos Tiedosic and Nando De Colo. Um, De Colo, who just got yesterday the MVP of the, of the league, plus the highest score and scored 19 points a game. He's, he's a guy that's just so effective. He gets everybody else involved. He gets to the foul line almost 10 times a game. He's shooting 90% from the, from the from the foul line, which is you know something that's so effective for him. He's scoring almost 10 points a game from the foul line at times. Uh, Tia Dosic, we all know, is, is just a fabulous player who gets everybody involved in the game, can shoot the three when he needs to. But on the other side, you got guys like Delaney. They're going to have to defend. These guys are going to have to defend because you got in locomotive. You got Malcolm Delaney, who's had an incredible season, um, and, and one of my favorite point guards that that. that that really gets the lane into the game is Beekoff, no, from from Locomotive. He's one of my favorite guys. And and then talking a little bit more, we talked to Locomotive being defensive. No, they've only given up 76 points a game this year, so they're less than 70 points a game at times. And you're talking about guys like Vordanov that's that's in there, and he's just defending people. We saw him defend Navarro and and against Barcelona, and he's just so intense. You may see him match up with Tiadosic or with De Colo, and and it's going to be an interesting matchup. The backcourt's going to be an interesting matchup tonight. Offense against defense in the backcourt, but in the front court we have uh, a little big man who won the Defender Award, Kyle Hines, for uh, Seska Moscow going against a couple guys much bigger than him. Never, never worried him before, but uh, Anthony Randolph and Chris Singleton are pretty talented players as well. Well, I think it's going to be great matchups under the basket as well. I think that uh, you know Kyle Hines has just really made a name for himself as a power player, as a great defender that doesn't give up or anything. I think he's going to have a very difficult matchup there against Chris Singleton, who's been in a very good form there against Barcelona in the whole series. I think that he has established himself in the EuroLeague and feels comfortable. Then you have two guys that got uh, a lot of finesse and play from the outside. If you talk about Andrei Voroncevic against Anthony Randolph, that's a spectacular matchup. Both guys can put the uh, ball on the floor. They can shoot a three-pointer, and they got a lot of finesse to their game. So I think that you got power and you got finesse. I mean, you got a complete package. So I think that we got a great matchup under the basket as well. And in between the backcourt and the frontcourt, we got a couple swingmen who could possibly swing this game, who are Nikita Korbanov for Seska Moscow and Corey Higgins. I mean, Corey Higgins for, and, and Nikita Korbanov for Seska Moscow and Victor Claver for Lokomotiv Kuba and Krasnodar. Those guys could affect the game a lot, too. Yeah, Higgins is the best three-point shooter this season, and he's a guy that gets a lot of people open because of his effectiveness from outside the three-point line. And then you got Claver, who's, I mean, you know, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing Claver yesterday, and I never realized how tall he was and how big he was. He's a, he's a big boy who plays that, that swing position, but he does it so effectively because he plays with his back to the basket. He's tough on the boards also. He does so many little things in the game, and, and those, those guys, they kind of they kind of hide a little bit between the point guards and the big men, but they're guys that, are, that, that can really make a change in the game. Let's turn our attention to the second semifinal tonight be between Fenerbahce Istanbul and Labrador Kucha Vitoria Gasteith, possibly the surprise team and the, the surprise team in the case of Labrador Kucha and possibly the favorite team in the minds of a lot of people in the case of Fenerbahce Istanbul. And of course, one of the reasons they're they are considered a favorite is their coach has won this uh, this Final Four eight times, so that automatically gives you some confidence going into the game. George, you like uh, you like you've been watching the big men all season for both of these teams, and we have two from the All Year League first team: uh, Giannis Berlusis for Laboral and Jan Vesely for Fenerbahce. How do you see the, the front court in that one? 
Well, there is just so much talent and experience if you talk about a matchup under the baskets in the second game. I think let's go first uh, with Giannis Borussis. I mean, that's a metamorphosis. That's an incredible season that he has put up. Last year, he was ever, he was a reserve player, a role player on Real Madrid, going only for five points per game. He was really signed late. I don't think he was a hot commodity on the player market, but what he's done is unbelievable. He's almost averaging a double-double. And if you just look at him, he is so comfortable there on the floor. He has so much trust built with Coach Perasovic that it's a joy to watch him footwork. I mean, the, the basics, I mean, he makes no mistakes. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him today. Against him is my countryman, Jan Wesley. He's coming back with an injury. He was out for six weeks, uh, but he has played two games in the domestic league. I think he's feeling good. Uh, he's, if not 100%, he's at 99%, and he's ready to go. He's extremely excited, and it's a different type of a player. It's a player uh, that's a spectacular athlete. He's going to try to do the, the, the finishes in the, in the lane. You're going to see the put-up dunks and, and follow-up dunks and everything like that. But then the big question that we discussed with Joe is what is going to be the role of Epe Udo? He had an incredible series there in the playoffs and, and he was taking a little bit of a backseat here to Jan Vesely when Jan Vesely was uh, early in the season when he was playing. So it's going to be also a question how Joko Obradovic manages the time. Does he, is he going to go with both of them or is he going to split the time? That, that's a question that I have in my mind. Double teaming them on Borussia's perhaps. We'll see tonight. Uh, but if you Talk about the front courts in that game. You have the speedy guys from uh, Labrador Alcucha, Mike James, and Darius Adams. And you have uh, all around type of players Bobby Dixon, Bogdan Bogdanovic, and even Costa Slukas, a two time yearly winner off the bench for Fenerbahce. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, when, Frank, when you have a bigger guy around here, you give me the point guards to talk about all the time, you know? You see, you give me the big men, but no, I, hey, listen, I, I don't mind taking the point guards for one reason. We've seen in the last couple of years, the Rice and Maccabi, we've seen Spanulis take over, we've seen Chacho Rodriguez take over in Madrid, and so, you know, the, the, this is really becoming a point guard game. You got a guy like Bobby Dixon, who kind of reminds me a little bit of Rice from Maccabi, kind of guy that can take over a game from inside, from outside, he loves to penetrate, loves to get that little floater going gets everybody else involved also. I mean, and then on the other side, you got two guys that I don't even know where they come from. There's Darius Adams and there's Mike James. These guys came from nowhere and they're, they're playing at a level right now, which is just, it's just amazing to watch. And I think, you know, talking, touching a little bit on what George said in this, this revelation of, of Giannis Barusas this year, not only is he is he so effective inside, but he's a leader in the team. And you know, I was, again, I was interviewing Mike James yesterday. And I, I was talking about how the way he like sometimes he grabs these little point guards like they're his kids, you know, and he puts them in their headlocks and and he like rubs their head and gets them going. And and you see these guys just feed off of a guy like that. And and boy, when Adams gets going, we saw him score 40 points the other day in the, in the regular league, and it's just amazing to watch these two guys play. So it's going to be. Again, I, you know, I love the big men. I love, I'm an interior type of game player, but the point guards are point guards that can t take over this this Final Four and win a championship for their teams. And let, let's also mention the swing men in this game because either one of them could uh, could could play a huge role. Is Luigi Datome for Fener Fenerbahce and Adam Hanga for Labrador Cucha. Both of them have been huge players all season. Well, what do you say about Luigi Datome? I think that he has proven he's a true all-around all -around player. I think that he can do anything that a coach can ask of him. He can play great offensively, both uh, going inside uh, or shoot from the outside. His three-point percentage is, is very high. Uh, I think that he is extremely experienced, and he understands also the role of the leader. If things are not going well, he's going to take the responsibility. If you think about Adam Henga, uh, also what a great season he's having, and I think that he has provided the best energy for the team. The way he plays the pressure defense on the ball, he's averaging almost two and a half, three steals per game. He can just cause so much trouble there for the opposing team with, with the way that he plays. He doesn't give up on any single play. Frank, if you talk about X factors, I want to mention uh, Costas Lucas. I think that you have to mention him. He's a player that comes off the bench, and it's a, such a luxury there for Coach Obradovich to have a, this kind of a player come off the bench. If things are not going well, he's going to step in, and he's going to ask for the ball in a situations that are difficult. He can be a major factor in this game. Well, there you have it. The scene is set for the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four from Berlin, Germany, and Mercedes-Benz Arena tonight, Friday. In the German capital, as we said, semifinal one between Seska Moscow and Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar at, at uh, 6 p.m. local time. And three hours later, the nightcap between Fenerbahce Istanbul and Labrador Kucha Vitoria Gasteith 
We will have all of it for you on EuroLeague TV with Joe Arlakis and George Zedek, and we hope you join us for the first night of what should be a great 2016 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four.